Today is Friday, March 31st. I'm Dylan Arms. And I'm Jordan Bogonowski. And, and you're, you're watching CTV. CTV. here at lunch. Here's Luisa with more on the story. Smash and Roll is a new local food truck managed by two culinary entrepreneurs which brings their creativity and love for food together. I started this food truck because I always wanted my own business so this was a great opportunity for me. I think Smash and Roll coming by it's great because we finally have a new option. It's great food and it's nearby. This National Roll coming by, it's a good thing because now we have more options to go eat during lunch. Our concept came from Vegas, El Paso and Juarez. We did a combination of uh, different food styles of the cities. What I like the most are the smash fries. They're really good. Uh, it's uh, fries, cheese, bacon and any kind of meat you like. It's, it's really good. I like that it's a combination of American and Mexican food. We park on Wednesdays on the funeral home right next to a senior parking lot. We will support it because it's cheap, it's nearby, and it's a local business. We will support this because this is a new concept that we don't find really anywhere, so it's just across the street. We offer lunch specials to all the students who want to come and join us. Students now have another option to eat out and enjoy the lunch. This has been Luisa Gonzalez for CTV. Back to you. The district is mandating 120 hours of community services for all classes below this year's senior class. Here's Jacob with more on the story. EPISD has implemented a new policy beginning with the class of 2018 that requires students to complete 120 hours of community service in order to graduate. This is the third year that the EPISD community service policy has been in place. So starting with this year's juniors, uh, that class when they were in ninth grade, all students are required to complete 30 hours of community service each year. This year's juniors, by the time they graduate, need to have completed 120 hours of community service. If they fail to complete and record those 120 hours, they're not going to be allowed to participate in graduation activities. Students and faculty members have conflicting views on what the policy entails. Uh, I think it's good that EPISD is having kids do their own community service and uh, do things that are impactful in the community. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of a flawed system because you know a lot of people fake their hours or don't actually do what they're supposed to. Um, but having everyone graduate with a certain amount of community service hours could look really good on a resume or a college application or something like that. I don't know, I think it's pretty unnecessary really because it's not really teaching us anything but we're wasting our time because we're using the hours to do community service instead of studying for homework or having social time with our friends. I do think there's some real uh, glitches in the system uh, that we're going to find out the hard way uh, next year uh, when we get our first group of required students uh, that, that have or haven't completed them. Um, I think the required number of hours is maybe a little high. I do a lot of service with my church. Uh, we do a lot of things in the community, so it's really easy for me uh, just because I naturally have things come up. But I can see how it could be a stress for some people who are looking for specific activities to help them out with their hours. You can visit episd.org slash service in order to log your hours and secure your graduation. This has been Jacob Zinner reporting for CTV. Back to you. After this commercial break, we'll have sports with Aiden. Can't be on your phone and driving, that's illegal. I'm fine. Logan, slow down, there's a speed bump. Oops. 
That's a horrible parking job. I thought this was right. Want to learn from the best? Go to Sun City Driving School located on North Mesa and Colony Cove 2. This is so good. Yeah. yeah. Are you ready to go film? What did we do wrong? I don't know. This is Aiden with sports. The girls' track and field team is off to an early start. Here's Laura with more on the story. The Coronado girls track team has been working hard for this year's field events. And here are a couple of outstanding jumpers who have been working hard. I love doing field events, they're my favorite, and um, I've been since I've been doing them since 7th grade, it definitely did help me since I'm in varsity. I have won medals, and every time I compete, I usually do bring home a medal, and it makes me really proud that I get to represent Coronado High School. We spend about, like, almost 30 minutes practicing on our jumps. We practice on our S shapes and everything. Recently, I've been getting first place medals. In triple jump, I've been jumping uh, around 30-31. I, my goal is 34. <laughs> I'm in long jump and I've improved by um, working hard and staying like longer after practices and like trying to get my steps right. The teamwork helps me, help me become better and um, they're always giving me tips and advice on what to do and we all work together good as a team. This is Laura Ponce reporting for CTV, back to you. In other sports news, the soccer team won by districts and is playing Lamar in Odessa tonight. Also. The boys baseball team is playing Montwood today and El Dorado tomorrow. That's all for sports, back to you. The dance company traveled to Wisconsin this past week to learn and prepare for upcoming performances. Here's Jake with more on the story. Last week, the Coronado Dance Company traveled all the way to Wisconsin to compete in the 2017 High School Dance Festival. High schools from all across the nation traveled to this festival. It's twofold. There's classes that the dancers take all day and then they also perform at night. If, we, if you want to, you can submit student choreography to be judged and possibly selected. We submitted four pieces and three of the four were selected, so we get to perform those three pieces at a showcase concert at the festival. There'll be recruiters watching, um, judges watching, and also they have an opportunity not only to be selected, which is a huge honor, to get to go, to get accepted to go is a huge honor, but they can also potentially get an award for best choreography of that night. The Coronado Dance Company has been working hard to prepare pieces for this event. We've been preparing for the past um, two months for this event. We rehearse every single day for our class period usually, and we vary between the three pieces that we're doing. So we have a group piece, a solo, and then the trio. The festival gives students a platform for college exposure and gives them a unique opportunity. I was one of the few people in company who auditioned and in that audition I got accepted into 12 college programs and I also got a full ride to a summer program in LIU Post. This event really helps me prepare for college because in a way we're going to have a similar schedule as well in college because we're going to be dancing all day if you're a dancer, dance major. So you really prepare the mental and physical abilities for that and the different types of dances you'll be doing. It's not just ballet, it's not just hip hop, you're taking different courses. This is Jake Jarecki reporting for CTV. Back to you. From all of Series CTV. Thanks so much for watching. And have a great weekend.